Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. In this video, we're gonna go over three common pilot mistakes that I see all the time. The idea is that you can learn here on YouTube and avoid ever making these same mistakes yourself. The very first one that we're gonna talk about is entering a non-towered field traffic pattern on the 45. Everybody should know that that 45 is meant to intersect the downwind right at the midfield point. However, most pilots intersect it here at the crosswind turn. The reason they do that is because they're pointed aiming at the middle of the runway, all right? If you want to join the downwind at the midfield point, then you need to put the nose of the aircraft closer to the approach end of the runway. Look at this diagram here, see what I'm saying. If this is a diagonal line coming from midfield to where you're entering on the 45, unless you're pointed over here at the approach end, you are going to join the downwind closer to the crosswind, and that is actually a collision hazard. I don't want to get into that whole thing again, but just check the last video we published and all the videos about the teardrop entry. So when you're joining the traffic pattern on a 45, put the nose of the aircraft toward the approach end of the runway. That will allow you to join at the midfield downwind point, which is what we're supposed to do. A real quick shout out to Jim Pittman, who's a designated pilot examiner and a flight instructor and an airline pilot. Jim pointed this out to us on a recent office hours call. If you would like to join us every week for office hours, please visit patreon.com slash learn TFP. And if you'd like to learn more about Jim, visit flywithjim.com. Both those links are in the description. The second thing that I see all the time is an improper level off procedure. If you find yourself 200 feet high, particularly as you're going into your instrument rating, if you find that anytime you level off, you're a little high and, and your altitude's a little high, you're probably leveling off with power. So remember, your trim is based on your forward airspeed. If you stop your climb with the nose of the aircraft still pointed up just by pulling the power back, you're at 80 knots, 85 knots, something like that. Over the next 10 minutes or so, the aircraft is going to have to figure out where level is. And as you do that, you are likely to return to a climb. That will, you'll notice it eventually. You'll say, oh shoot, I'm 200 high. And you'll pitch forward, you'll trim that off. And eventually the aircraft will stabilize at its cruise speed. So to fix that, you should be leveling off using the following procedure. It's first pitch, then it's trim, then it's power, and then it's trim again. All right, I know that's not easy to say, but it's pitch, trim, power, trim. You pitch the aircraft forward, you keep the power in there while you accelerate to something close to your cruise speed. If you don't want to fight the plane, which I don't recommend doing, then put some rough trim in while you accelerate. Then when you get close to your cruise speed, set the power where you want it to be to sustain that cruise speed and fine tune the trim then go through a flow check and a checklist. By the way, if you guys wanna learn all of this stuff, please get a free three-day trial of my Ground School app. We have tons of content in there, four courses, private instrument, mastering landings, SOPs, all of it for one price, unlimited access, get your free trial and check it out. The last thing that I see all the time is pilots having too tight a grip on the control yoke. If there's one problem that I would say causes more downstream issues than almost anything else, it's probably too tight a grip on the control yoke. You should hold the yoke like you would hold a baby's hand, all right? And that'll get you back over to the trim often enough so that you can continue to have that light grip. If for some reason you're having trouble doing that, then do the old pen trick, something like this. Just practice holding it with these two little pincers like you're a crab. Now, I don't expect you to hold it that way, over time, you will learn some blend of the two. You will learn how to hold it in a way that, like we said, is like holding a baby's hand. But if you practice like this, it'll break you of the habit of having that sort of white knuckle death grip, which will have you fighting the airplane and not using the trim. So consider the pen trick, but remember, almost every time you take off, say to yourself, okay, I'm gonna look at my Lindbergh reference, more on that in the Ground School app, and I'm going to lighten my grip on the control yoke as I stay coordinated with one hand on the power, eyes outside the airplane, and put a thousand feet of altitude in the bank, so to speak. All right, you guys, I hope those tips help you avoid making those three common mistakes. Get a free three-day trial of our Ground School app. Please leave a comment below if there's a video you'd like to see. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that little alert bell so you get notified of uploads. But most importantly, until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.